Card King, here I come! Hello, music fans, music collectors, and all hobbyists. Welcome to the Card King Sports and Variety Show. I am your host, the Catman, Brian Catequit, a.k.a. the Card King. We are live on ABC's KMET 1490AM.com, your number one spot right here for news and talk on the West Coast. I thank everyone for tuning in this morning. On the telephone line, I welcome to the program a legendary guitarist, violinist, singer, and song. Songwriter, we welcome in the legendary Pat McManus. Pat Brian C., honor to have you. It's an absolute pleasure to be talking to you, also, Brian. It's our honor. Um, Pat, I want to begin early in your career, reading up on your illustrious career. You come from a family of musicians, uh, dad being a sax player from the Bronx, New York, and your mom a singer. So, entertainment was, I believe, destined for you at an early age. Yes, well, you know, it was it was very strange. My dad's family made the very strange move uh, from, from from New York back to Ireland. I don't really know. He never really explained to me why that was. But, uh, of course, his mum and dad were of, of Irish descent. So I think it, they had a longing to go home. And, uh, in fact, my grandfather would have was a cowboy out in Wyoming, uh, as, as far as I can remember my dad saying, you know. So uh, he came back to New York. Uh, uh, and married there, and then they headed back to Ireland, and uh, that's where my father's musical journey began. He he got immersed uh, as, a, as he was about 13 when he came back to live in Ireland. So he remembers uh, going up I in the Bronx and listening to all the, the the different types of blues music and Dixieland jazz. So uh, that led to be a very very eclectic mix of music in our house. You know, you got everything from the Ink Spots right through to traditional Irish folk music, which he played a big part of here in Ireland. So it was only naturally when, when his sprogs uh, got a little bit older, uh, we, would, we, we would start playing as well, you know, because there was always music around the house. And to me, it was my calling. It was uh, it, it, music meant something really, really special to me. And uh, from a very early age, I had that calling. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to to make and play music in different genres for, for all of my, my, my career and life so far. Yeah, and it really began early. Uh, many of the listeners may not know this about you, but you were also a fiddle champion. Uh, you won numerous awards with that instrument. Uh, what intrigued yeah. you about the fiddle? Well, you know, it, it goes back uh, for many, many, the, the tradition of playing the, the fiddle in, in, in Ireland goes back, particularly in our family, for many, many, many generations. And uh, I'm talking, we can trace it back maybe five, six, seven generations, you know. So it, it, there's been a tradition of that there. And, of course, my father, when he got back to Ireland, uh, he learned to play as well because his uncle lived down the road not too far from him. He, he started him off, and then my dad had a sort of rich collection of very old tunes that had been handed down to him from the various ancestors. And uh, so it only I became intrigued by that form of music very, very early on, from maybe five years old. And I started playing the violin when I was seven, and uh, I, I, I just had a real passion and a love for, for traditional folk music, you know. And uh, so I, I used to, in order to keep the tradition alive, they used to run competitions, they still do to this very day, uh, throughout Ireland, uh, uh, and it, what you do is in the regional areas you you qualify to get through to the All Ireland. Now, when I mean the All Ireland, I also mean that fiddle players from America, from all over the UK, anywhere they can enter this competition and enter. So it's quite a, a, a an accolade actually to get there and and be the finalist and actually win it. You know, so you know that kind of excited me and, and spurred me on even more. So you know, not so much winning the competition, but just. I met other like-minded souls like myself, and, and we love playing the music together. And there's a great tradition of playing music in Ireland, just purely for the pleasure of playing music, Brian. It's not that there's, no, there's no ulterior motive there. There's no sort of uh, wanting to make uh, uh, monetary gains. It's just purely for the love of the music and putting a smile on people's faces, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really remarkable at a young age to be, a, a, you know, a fiddle champion. It, really remarkable, Pat. 
Um, now, your rock and roll career began over 40 years ago. And, you know, I want to touch on some of your early influences, uh, like like uh, Rory Gallagher and, and the rock band called The Horse Lips. Those were some of your early influences, correct? Yeah, well, the very, very earliest uh, 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 interest was, uh, was um, The Horse Lips. I have to confess that up until that point, Brian, I would have seen myself pretty much as a, a, as a, a folk, a purist. I didn't. I was aware of other forms of music, but I wasn't really that into it uh, as a kid growing up. You know, I knew it was there. It wasn't until I went to a local village or local town to see the horse lips play that my sister actually dragged me along. I was quite reluctant, I think. And uh, when I heard the band play, what what they did was they fused Irish folk music with the rock element. And that just completely blew my mind. I'd never heard anything like that in my life. And I was absolutely in awe of the band. I just couldn't believe. You know, maybe if I'd seen Led Zeppelin at the same time, it would have been over my head. It would have, it would have passed me by. But because the, music, the, the trad was fused into their rock music, I immediately related to it. And I got the bug then. From then on in, it was downhill, I'm afraid, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> You've been very successful, and it, and it happened very quickly, Pat. <laughs> now, uh, how about, talk about uh, Rory Gallagher, the legendary guitarist. He he had a big impact on you. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, you know, Rory. Rory was a, a tour de force. You have to remember, in Ireland, there wasn't many rock stars back I, 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 in the mid '60s, early '70s, and Rory carried the banner for all those bands. He was the first true rock and roll giant we had of, out of Ireland. Then Lizzie came afterwards, and U2 came afterwards, and all the great bands that came. But I think Rory sent the, set the benchmark for all of us, you know. And with, without Rory's success, I don't think maybe the music industry would have looked at Ireland as much, you know, because we're, let's face it, we're a little island in the middle of the Atlantic, you know. So it was difficult to get A&R people interested in, in, in up-and-coming talent. And there was plenty, believe you me. But Rory carried that banner, so it was, he was an extraordinary person, an extraordinary man, made extraordinary music. He was a fabulous songwriter. You know, everybody talks about, you know, what, what a fantastic guitar player, which he was. But he also was, he was that, what I call the real deal. He, he, he could compose, he wrote beautiful songs, be it in the blues vein, be it in the quite folky vein, or be it in the all-out rock vein. He, he was a, a true master in my in my estimation, and one that I looked up and, and to and revered very, very much, you know. Now, Pat, if I'm not mistaken, you got a chance to play second on the bill behind Gallagher in 89. What, what was it, the Bala Ronan gig? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, that's up near a, a lake uh, uh, up, up in the north of Ireland, and I'm from, I'm from the northwest of Northern Ireland, so... This place is called Loch Ney, and it, it's like a, a, a huge big lake I, in the middle of Northern Ireland. And it was on the banks, on the shores of that loch, that we had a festival called the Ballyronan Festival. And it was very fortunate uh, to have played with Rory at that festival. And we also did gigs in Germany at Dinkel's Bull in, 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 in a big uh, amphitheater outside. And we did three or four shows together there as well, you know. So... It was awesome to meet the man for the first time. I actually met him in Germany for the first time because Rory was absolutely an enormous star in Germany, you know. So it was great to see him in front of a crowd that, you know, 25, 30,000 people that really, you know, adored the man. So that was the first time I actually got the opportunity to meet Rory and meet his band. I think it was Brendan O'Neill was on drums and the great, wonderful legend that was Jerry McAvoy on bass guitar was it was truly, for a young band starting out like us, it was, it was just like, you know, this is where we need to get to, you know. And it just seemed like light years ahead of everybody. You know? <laughs> so we felt we had a lot of catching up to do, Brian. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. We're talking with the legendary guitarist, entertainer, Pat McManus, who is with us this, uh, this morning, this afternoon, where, where you are, Pat. Um, I want to touch a little bit about the Mama's Boys. That's the band that you're most noted for. Uh, talk about the birth of the Mama's Boys, and w which quickly be became a success in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, well, the, 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 how, uh, how that happened was, you know, I'd been to see the horses, as I explained earlier, you know, and that was the motivation uh, I needed 
to lift up the electric guitar because I was just blown away by the guitar player in the band and the band in general. So when I went home, I was all excited, and I told my, my brother John, who, uh, and I delegated out the instruments to each of my brothers. <laughs> they had no choice in the matter. I told my, 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 uh, my brother John, who was in the middle, there were three boys, uh, I told John, you're on bass, guitar, and vocals, and Tommy, my youngest brother, you, 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 you're the skin hitter, you know? So we just did it purely for fun at the beginning. It was an exciting, we're young guys, you know? It, it, we, we were just, you know, we were practicing out in our dad's shed, because we are from a farm, right? So there was plenty of sheds to practice in, you know? And we would just spend away our days, whiling away the days, you know, learning, to, learning the craft and trying to learn the instruments as we went along. And uh, what happened next was quite bizarre because uh, we became very friendly with the horses. We used to turn up to the gigs before they actually turned up. <laughs> to see them. It was, sometimes it was a bit embarrassing. They'd go, oh, not you lot again, you know. <laughs> but we loved the band so much. So during the course of a conversation, it slipped out that we actually played. And uh, Barry Devlin, the bass player in the, ba in the horses, said, oh, really, you know. I'd love to hear you guys play, but we were very, very shy, and, you know, I'd never played in front of anybody before like, like that. And uh, so we were a bit reluctant, so Barry said, I tell you what, I will come down and listen to the band, and if, if you cut the mustard, so to speak, you can, you can come on, on a, an Irish tour with us. And really, that was the birth of the band. We, he came down, very graciously of his, gave of his time, came down and listened to the band and was blown away, and he said, look, guys, you know, you, you, you're ready to come on the road with us. So it was really Barry and the horse that really gave us a, 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 our first start in the music industry properly, you know, and it was, for that I will be eternally grateful, you know. And once we got the bug, then there was no stopping us. <laughs> it was no stopping you guys. Uh, the band rapidly became leaders of the new wave British heavy metal music genre. Yes, I know we were very fortunate. Um, you know... Uh, in, in Northern Ireland, we are the only band, the Mama's Boys were the only band that actually got signed out of the new wave of British heavy metal. I, I'm not talking about the UK and now where you had Iron Maiden and all those uh, Def Leppards, all those fantastic bands coming through. But in Northern Ireland, things were difficult because of the troubles and stuff like that, and it was hard to get uh, uh, bands, uh, Ian or men, interested in the band. And the only other guitar player I knew at the time uh, of my generation, of my age, was the... The, the, the legend that is Vivian Campbell, and Vivian and I were, 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 were good mates. You know, we, I, I, I knew Vivian's band, Sweet Savage, in the very early days, but we were fortunate enough. Vivian went off and did his thing with Dio then, and, you know, and his band kind of set up. We were the only band in Northern Ireland that actually got signed to a major record deal. So it was quite an achievement for three young lads from a farm in the northwest of Fermanagh, Northern Ireland. <laughs> Oh, it's an enormous achievement, Pat. Now, the Reading Festival, now that's the festival that you're most proud of. Uh, that yeah. really propelled the band's career. Yeah. Well, you see, another, another little set of circumstances happened there. Uh, if it hadn't been for, for Philip Linnett and Finn Lizzy, we would have never got that, that Reading Festival. What happened was we were doing um, a matchmaking festival here in Ireland. Don't laugh. <laughs> it does. It happens. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so uh, here's this heavy metal band in, 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 in the midst of this matchmaking festival down in the west of Ireland. And guess who was playing? Philip Linnett was playing with his solo band. He had a solo album out at the time. And he actually heard us play on stage. He happened to come into the festival site when we were on stage. And he said to one of our road crew or our manager at the time, who are these guys that are playing, you know? And he said, oh, they're, they're a little band from, from, from Ireland that just started up. And he said, these guys are damn good. So he came over to us and said, look, I, I really enjoyed what you did there. You know, it was really, really interesting. You know, it reminds me of an early Thin Lizzy when we started out. And he said, look, we're doing a farewell tour. Would you guys be interested in, in doing the support? And of course, you know, we'd have bit his arm off for that. <laughs> you know, so no. hence... We got the UK tour, the farewell tour with Thin Lizzy. That was Philip Linnett, John Sykes, Scott Gorman, and the wonderful Brian Downey on drums. And, and you know, the, the, that allowed us to get exposure in the UK mainland, right? And out of that, then, we actually got, hence, the Reading Festival. And that's how that really came about. We, went, we played a, 
uh, well, we played a personally a club in the, in London called the Marquee Club, and uh, one of the manager who actually ran that club also actually ran the Reading Festival. And he he came in and listened to us and said, "I'm going to put that band on at Reading," which was unheard of because we we made a bit of history there. This may seem strange to you, but we I think in the rock annals of of the Reading F Festival, we are the only band ever unsigned band to actually have played there. All the other bands, you had to have a record deal in actually to get on that bill. You had to have something happening. But because he liked the band so much, he said, I don't care whether they have a record deal or not, I'm putting you guys on. So it, 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 it was a great uh, little achievement for, 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 the, for the three of us, you know. It was, it was quite a, what would you say, a, 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 a pinnacle moment in our career because after that festival, we did actually get signed. <laughs> Yeah, and you started really touring with legendary groups, right? With Bon Jovi, Rush, Scorpions. You played with Deep Purple. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. Our, our experience in America was was just fantastic. We we made up. We signed to Jive Records and Arista in America, and uh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, overnight, uh, and it was just the beginning, the growth of MTV, and we were fortunate enough to. Uh, we get our video, uh, Mama, we're all crazy now. They're being played on, on on MTV, and that really propelled the band. So it meant that we could come over to to America, and and uh, we hooked up with with uh, Rat and Bon Jovi, and we went on a on a, on a on a bill out on the road for about three months, touring all of America, and that was that was just a total dream come true for us because. We loved the band Rat, and we loved Bon Jovi. They were, you have to remember, Bon Jovi were just, it was just prior to them becoming absolutely massive. The, it, Rat were the big headlining act at the time, and uh, then Bon Jovi were just about to break, but they hadn't done Slippery When Wet uh, at that particular time. And, uh, of course, you know, and then it was us opening up. So, I mean, we immediately would listen to... The, the Bon Jovi band and go, you know, my brother would look at each other and we go, this band's going to be absolutely huge, you know. They were just so fantastic. And, of course, the Rat guys were already at the pinnacle of their career. And they kind of, you know, they kind of took us under the wing a little bit and looked after us on the road because, you know, you have to remember, this was a total different uh, 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 situation for us. We'd never been in a situation like that. We just, we just toured in little little local halls uh, in, the, in the wilds of Ireland, you know, and to be thrust out into the middle of a proper rock and roll tour was, was quite an eye-opener, let me say. But I have to say, I have to thank the guys in Rat for, for being so gracious to us and being so fantastic as well. And also, Twisted Sister, we, we worked with those guys quite a bit as well, and Dee Snyder was absolutely wonderful to us on the road, you know. I think he appreciated, you know, how much we, 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 gave, we were traveling around when everybody else... Believe this, when everybody else was running around in, in a big tour bus with their sleeping beds, we were going around in a car <laughs> following the caravan of rock and roll on the road, you know. And Dee would say every night to the audience, he would say, you know, he would let everybody know who we were. And, you know, and I'll be forever grateful to that man. He didn't have to do that, you know. And he was, they were just, these guys, we were like a band of brothers on the road. And it, it, they were so wonderful to us. It was an experience I shall never forget. And I don't think uh, my brother John would ever forget it either, you know. It meant so much to us to be on the road with those guys. And then for them to be so humble and so nice to us, well, it was, it was just a fantastic moment uh, in, in, in our lives and in our career. Amazing. Now, now, I have about five, six minutes left. I want to get this in. I know uh, the Pat McManus band, uh, your latest work, your latest band released the newest album. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, we were, uh, Brian, we were like every other band in this situation. I mean, I'm used to doing close on 150 shows a year throughout uh, the UK, Ireland, and Europe, you know. And suddenly that stopped overnight because of, of the pandemic. And, you know, we were no different. Everybody was in the same boat. So I thought, you know, it would be good, it would be good if I could put some, uh, some uh, well, I had some time on my hands to actually put it to good use. So I had some ideas for an album. So I finished those ideas off. Uh, I formed a bubble with my band because you had to form bubbles here in order to, to, to contact each other, you know, or see each other. So uh, what we did was we formed a bubble, and when I had the songs ready, then we went off to the studio and recorded them. So, and hence the title, Full Service Resumed. It, it came towards the end 
I, I had the album prepared towards the end of the, 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 the major lockdown here. We're still locked down in many instances, but it, 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 we have a little bit more freedom, so hence the title, Full Service Resumed. Amazing. So I want to I want to mention to the audience the the name of the album. It's called Full Service Resumed. It was yes. released yesterday. Where can the listening now, now? I have a large listening audience. A lot of music collectors. Uh, where can they purchase this new work of yours? They can get it on store for music. They are the ones who are officially releasing it and putting it online. So if they go to store store for music. They would they will be fit to, to purchase the album or get the album there, or or they can contact us uh, on patmcmanus.co.uk, which is my website, and we can steer them towards uh, uh, where the album is. Again, the, uh, the the name of the album, Full Service Resumed. Now, Pat, I, I was doing a little research. I found a little clip of your work that I want to air, and maybe we can discuss. Okay. Let's hear Pat McManus. I mean that's that's amazing stuff, Juggernaut, two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but funny that's uh, 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 I was what I was actually trying to do there with that particular track was uh, if you hear the whole track in its entirety was emulate the Irish pipes a little bit and uh, there's lots of uh, uh, little funny techniques of two handed tapping to it to try and emulate and I always try to do that that kind of thing in a musical sort of way if I possibly can you know so. That was what the goal I was trying to reach there was that to emulate the old Irish pipes, you know. So uh, I don't know whether it succeeded, succeeded or not, but I gave it a go anyway. <laughs> I mean, that is just some amazing heavy-duty stuff. I, I I saw that on YouTube, and I said I have to put it on air. It's just well, amazing. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Most people think it's a moment of madness by me, but uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's really a moment of, of talent madness, I would say. <laughs> So I, I, you released your your 2022 UK tour. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to that. And, and, of course, everything is in the lap of the gods. You know, it's, it, it's taking things, the, the baby steps here, very tentative steps uh, to getting back out on the road. I have done some shows here in Ireland, uh, so all socially distanced and outside as well. You know, so they haven't allowed the, the, the venues to open up properly in Northern Ireland, where I'm from at the moment. You know, I think in the next week or so, they're going to relax the rules a little bit on that. So we had some, everything that we had for 2021 had been moved to uh, 2022. So, you know, those dates kicking off in the, U2, in, in the UK will hopefully start, kick off the tour and we'll get back to some kind of Brian normality again. I'm, I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that, you know, I get back to doing what I do best, you know, and getting out there and rocking and rolling as best I can. No doubt about it. And um, final question, you know, I was a big fan of Samantha Fox uh, as a teenager, 1988, you know, 87, 88. And I understand you played on, a, on her first track. Is, is that correct? That, Brian, you're absolutely right. And also she recorded one of my tracks as well. 
Uh, wow. Called the Spirit, yeah, she recorded the track called The Spirit of America, which I wrote, and uh, Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest played guitar on it. So, you know, I was, there, there's a little bit of uh, uh, music uh, info for you, <laughs> if you didn't already yeah. know that. Yeah, so, yes, I, I was, I, I was uh, lucky to be, I was run, at, in the studio at the same time that Sam was in the studio recording her debut uh, single and album, and they invited me in to play guitar on it. So, yes, I was, I was delighted to actually be fit to do that. And, uh, you know, the, the, all of the UK, she was a very, very big star here uh, in, in Ireland and in the UK and throughout parts of Europe and Australia, you know, so I, I was very honoured to be fit to play on that track, and then I was even more chuffed when she actually used one of my tracks to actually put on her album later on, and maybe a second album or something like that, maybe a third, I'm not quite sure, but uh, all I know was that she recorded it, and that Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest played the guitar on it, so that, that was enough of an endorsement for me, you know, I was, I was over the moon about that, because I was a huge Priest fan, you know. <laughs> oh, I mean, no question. I have one minute left. Now, you also did work with Tom Jones. That's right. I, I, I vaguely remember that. That, that was kind of done in, 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 fiercely quick, you know. So I, I've been fortunate enough with, to work with many, many great, great rock and roll stars, you know. And Tom is a legend in his own right. And I've worked with Gilbert O'Sullivan. And I've worked with quite um, al alternative music well from, from, with a guy called Tricky from a band called Massive Attack, who who are quite alternative music, you know, and, and uh, so I've, I've been around the block a few times, Brian, but I've really enjoyed the challenge uh, and the diversity of the other kinds of music, and it's, it's always an honor to be asked to play like that. So, you know, I, I try to give uh, of my services as, as best I can. Pat, I really appreciate your time. It, it was really an honor. You're a legend in your own right. And again, I want to, for the audience, it's patmcmanus.co.uk is the website. Thank you very much, Brian. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much, and good luck to you. We'll, we'll keep in touch. God bless. We certainly will. Please do. Feel free anytime. If you feel like a chat or you want to talk about something, I'm always here. Beautiful, Pat. Thank you so much, and we'll speak soon. God bless, man, and thank you once again. I appreciate that. You got it, my man. That was the uh, legendary Pac Mim Pat McManus, the new album, Full Service Resumed, uh, it came out yesterday. Make sure you get it. Again, the website, patmcmanus.co.uk. Until next week, happy collecting to all.